You live in Texas. Stink Pass is already $10 a month. And if it gets $1 more, or I'm gonna kick your ass. Yeah. It's all time we admit the Xbox tax is real. Never! What happened last week? Well, last week, Microsoft messed up and they were rightfully called out by the entire gaming community. They are a trillion dollar company, not your best friend, yada yada, hold their feet to the fire. You know how it is. A lot of fair criticism, but with it came that infectious negativity that people really get attached to because let's face it, for some people, bad Xbox news is literally their source of income. So if they can constantly keep the outrage going, they will. For instance, Dreamcast guy, the only person in the world who can turn good Xbox news into bad Xbox news because if he doesn't, he won't be able to afford his soy. Or uh, Griffin Gaming, who went to college but is still somehow not educated, writing out stupid ass posts like this. What's up brokies, Griffin Gaming here. When Xbox is selling 800k consoles in like the literally same literally time span that Sony incredibly sold literally 4.5 million incredibly PS5s, it literally makes sense why Microsoft is literally going third party bruh. After spending literally 80 billion on acquisitions incredibly xbox series x is pulling in wii u numbers currently what is literally ironic is that literally phil spencer's literal attempt to save xbox by buying all these studios bruh incredibly might be the very literally thing that sinks it hey, hey griffin i really appreciate you coming in to record for this episode but i will say you're quite stupid. Wii U numbers? Griffin, do you even know how much the Wii U sold in its lifetime? 13 million units. You know where the Xbox is? 29 million. Or 27 million. 20, somewhere between 27 and 29 million. The numbers don't lie! Either way, the console already surpassed Wii U's lifetime numbers within what? I think it's first like year or two? You don't know what you're talking about. You're just making shit up on the spot like everybody on Twitter does. And you always talk like you're above Twitter when you post on your community page on YouTube like it is Twitter. See, it, instead of being upset that Microsoft as a company is doomed or anything like that, people are only upset that they aren't doing better than PlayStation. Why? Who gives a shit? Not me. If Microsoft is doomed because they're not where PlayStation is, then you can keep Microsoft looking like they're constantly doomed every single month, week, day, hour, minute. It's easy. I could do it right now. And it's not so much that I'm defending poor, defenseless, trillion dollar Microsoft. No, I'm just tired of journalists, influencers, and social media turning any little bit of bad news into magnitudes of bad news. They closed down Tango Gameworks, and now all of a sudden, the gaming media is telling me, oh, talks are in. Didn't you hear the news? Internal discussions suggest Microsoft doesn't want to put Call of Duty Day 1 on Game Pass. It's over, we told you so. Colin Moriarty was right. One week you're saying this, and then the next week, the news is this. God, on Game Pass is not guaranteed. Microsoft had internal debates about it. Report. Several days later. Breaking, Microsoft intends to add Call of Duty Black Ops 6 this year's new Call of Duty game to Xbox Game Pass on day one. I'm telling you, it's time we all admit the Xbox tax is real and you subscribe to me and stop listening to the naysayers. No offense, Alex. No offense, Dustin. It's just that sometimes trying to be as reasonable as possible will lead you down an unreasonable path just to get there. The way gaming media reported on Xbox, it's as if the console 
will no longer exist by the end of the year. That's how they always report on Xbox. And they almost got me. I'm not gonna lie, I for a second was convinced the troubles were so bad, Microsoft wasn't gonna be able to put COD on Game Pass. But then I'm reminded this is a trillion dollar company. How can they not afford to do that? They just opened up a new studio with Activision and that's being treated as something evil as well. It's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, the one thing I wanted to come out of the ABK deal is happening and it's happening a lot sooner than we expected. Most people had assumed we wouldn't see a Call of Duty game day one on Game Pass for at least three to four years after the acquisition. The fact that it's happening this soon just proves we're all wrong. We don't know what the f we're saying and we know just as little as the influencers and journalists reporting on it. Now anyways, what does this mean for Game Pass? Well, it's been an excellent year for the service. Starting off with Pal World, then we'll be getting Hellblade 2, Stalker 2, Indiana Jones, Avowed, and now the new Black Ops game. It's fair to say the service really is increasing its value, which will definitely, without a doubt, lead to a price hike. Don't kid yourself. Will this lead to Game Pass numbers skyrocketing? Absolutely. But not enough that Microsoft will manage to not have to increase the price. It's, it's going to happen. And to that I say, as long as the value is maintained, as long as they continue to give me more reasons to come back, 20 bucks a month is really not that bad. I see people paying more for smaller subscription services with less content. I also believe this will lead to Microsoft creating new tiers with games like Call of Duty. I highly doubt they're gonna throw in all the perks that come with it. My best guess is if you wanna play the more enhanced editions of Call of Duty that include all the DLC, season passes, and cosmetics, you're gonna have a new tier of Game Pass that comes with all of those, and the other tier will come with the base game solely. Do I like this approach? Well, I like it a hell of a lot more than paying for Call of Duty and then paying for all the extra stuff. And to that, I say there's nothing wrong with having an alternative. Call of Duty is a very expensive franchise to get into if you really want to get into it. And people love their Call of Duty. I think it's a good idea and it will help people save money. Some of those people being me because I got taxes up the ass. You really think I'm better off just paying full price for COD with the added value of all those other games being released on the service this year? I don't feel like I'm being ripped off in the slightest like I am with, say, Ubisoft Plus. However you look at it, if you're a Game Pass subscriber and frequent user, this is good news. And yet for some reason, Dreamcast guy wants to spin it like it's bad news as you would expect him to do. You know he's seeking validation for being wrong about the ABK deal being blocked to this day. He holds a lot of resentment towards Xbox and Xbox users for constantly proving him wrong. So if he can get any little W, he will because let's face it, this man was born a loser and will likely die a loser. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're talking about Xbox because a big new report was just released that Game Pass is making a final big gamble. They're going to put Call of Duty into Game Pass this year. Final gamble? That's been their strategy and plan from the very beginning. How's that their final gamble? The strategy of Game Pass has been the strategy they've stayed with for years now, okay? Let, let's not pretend like this is a last ditch effort. It's not. And if you don't think they're gonna buy more studios to put on that service, Vince McMahon style with the wrestling territories, then let me sell you that bridge in Baltimore. And it seems like this is probably going to raise the price of the service. We're gonna get a big price increase for Game Pass. And it will still somehow be the best value in gaming. But additionally, I think this is the final experiment. This is their test to see if they can actually make Game Pass profitable before they just give up on gaming altogether. Well, that's very short-sighted of you because they are still fully intending to sell video games. And no, I think this is far from the final studio they're gonna try to put on their service. Why the hell would they be reaching out to Sega for Persona or Yakuza or Ubisoft? You really think Microsoft's plan starts and ends with Call of Duty? Have you not been paying attention? I mean, you don't have to be a fan of it, and I would 
completely understand that. But this here is just pure cope. Microsoft is going to release the next Call of Duty, which is rumored to be Black Ops 6, on Game Pass. And they're going to announce it at the Xbox Showcase coming up in June. But if you actually consider this, this is a very tough sell. This is a move that I think is going to either work very well, or more likely, it's going to totally explode in Microsoft's face. Uh, what? Subscribing to Game Pass to play Call of Duty is a tough sell? You don't understand the community, do you, Dreamcast guy? You're very disconnected from the rest of the world. I talk to a lot of people who live in countries where this is a godsend. You, on the other hand, you're used to buying games like you're used to buying meth. Not to be a Call of Duty hater, I mean, some of the games are good, but they're definitely extremely casual. There are people that go and buy Call of Duty every single year. They just go and spend their cash on it back to back to back. And that upfront sales, that just generates so much income, followed by microtransactions and skins and season passes and map packs and map packs. Bro, once again, this guy proves everyone, once again, that he's a fucking fake ass fan. He mentions the term map packs. For Tanga, there hasn't been a map pack in the fucking Call of Duty franchise in at least the last five fucking years. It's all relegated down to fucking cosmetic skins now for, for microtransactions. They realized that they couldn't fucking keep the players together. But that's why they fucking did away with that whole thing. They just add the maps in for free. All you're doing is paying for fucking skins. So the fact that they're trying to test removing that upfront pay, the fact that they're going to take something they just spent $70 billion on and put it out there essentially for free, I think this is, it, it is a move that I think they are going to instantly regret. Okay, what? Free? You were just talking about a price increase on Game Pass. All right, Game Pass is not free. So no, they are not giving you Call of Duty for free. And this is not a test. People have been renting video games since the existence of video games. The majority of people I knew growing up had fat stacks of rented games from Blockbuster. Renting games ain't an experiment. It was just an extra source of revenue. They aren't testing taking away your ability to buy the game. You can still buy it. Everything has the potential to fail or succeed. I do not think they will fail in giving people the option to subscribe to Game Pass to play COD while also still selling it at the same time. Now, a lot of people are just sort of laughing at this because who's laughing at this? Why are you talking out of your ass? You're not even laughing about it. You look dead serious. It is bizarre that this is an announcement that seems almost a bit too late. What the? How is it too late? They officially closed the acquisition in October of last year, and now October of this year, Call of Duty is coming out. That's a full 12 months. That's earlier than anybody expected. Jesus Christ, rub two brain cells together and stop doing meth. People are, of course, all the replies are like, okay, Game Pass is about to be $25 a month. So, yeah. This is going to be a two-prong dumpster fire. Uh, you can't win with these guys. First, they say, Microsoft is charging too little for Game Pass. And then they complain when the price goes up. I mean, how do you win with these types of people? How? Yes, the price is going to go up. We're all expecting it. We are all calling it. We enjoyed it when it was easy to sub for $1. So we're not celebrating that, but... You were begging for them to practically increase the price, so what's the problem? See, for me, it's if Game Pass goes a dollar higher, I'm kicking your ass. You, on the other hand, you were saying Game Pass is too cheap. So this thing is going to bomb. Uh, I'm going to call it right now. You can clip it. I'm filming this at 10 a.m. on May 17th. This is about to be the lowest selling Call of Duty of all time. Do you know what that means to the Call of Duty franchise? That means nothing. The lowest selling Call of Duty makes more money than some countries. If you want to die on that hill, fine, go ahead. It's the worst hill to die on though, because if you're right, it means nothing. And if you're wrong, it will backfire on you way harder. I mean, you're an idiot. You're so stupid. You can't even pick the right hill to die on. My God, this is always shit. You know what? There's a lot to watch here. I'm gonna allow other YouTubers to cover the rest and I'll watch part of it on stream. There's too much stupidity here. The guy will not admit he's wrong. 
all right? First off, he cries and complains that Call of Duty isn't on Game Pass within like the first three weeks Microsoft owns them. Then he says Call of Duty won't be on Game Pass. And now Call of Duty is on Game Pass and it's bad. Ooh, icky. This isn't good. Desperate. What a total PlayStation cuck. And the worst part is, the only thing worse than being wrong is to be wrong and ugly as fuck at the same time. It's the worst combination. Anyways, expect price increases, but for me, alas, I can finally say Call of Duty is coming to Game Pass. You're gonna get your money's worth, and I'm still expecting bad Xbox news next week. So if you wanna be here for it, like, comment, share, and subscribe if you so choose to, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. <laughs> Free Congo sucks ass. <laughs> <laughs>